Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Q&A with A and V. I am Vincent Rackenyellow, and with me from New York, give me Rosenfeld. Hello, Vincent. How are you? Nice day today. Look, I can see the blue sky still outside your window there. Yeah, it was, it was almost like 90. It was beautiful. I went outside and everything. I was here in the basement most of the day. Not so good. I had, but I did accomplish something. I what did you accomplish? I completed the filings of the nonprofit status for Microbe TV to the New York State and to the feds. Ooh, was Excellent. that a pain? Now I sit back. Doesn't and sound wait. like fun. Nope. Doesn't sound like fun. Oh, it was very frustrating. It's a crappy website. Anyway, uh, we got our names up. Okay, Amy's name is up. And I know uh, we somebody are... says, don't forget to put up Kathy's name. I think <laughs> that's pretty funny. Calling. Oh, yeah. I don't have, Hysterical. I don't have Kathy's name here. We, we don't, I can quote, I sometimes make a mistake, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's start. Rod, do we know what the mechanism is, is for loss of taste and smell in some people infected with SARS-CoV-2? What do you think? So there is just a paper that I downloaded this afternoon in science from Science Translational Medicine, I think. Maybe the science signaling that looked at this question and uh, of the uh, olfactory epithelium and everything. I haven't read it yet. Maybe next week I'll get to it. I mean, the, the idea previously was that the virus infected the, the support cells. So you have the olfactory epithelium in your nose where the, the chemosensors are there in the epithelium. Uh, and then they, they synapse into your olfactory um, part of your brain. And the idea is that the support cells are infected by the virus, not the actual neurons. That's my understanding. Yeah, I think that that's true. I think that that is uh, what this paper uh, expanded upon. I think there's some like yep. signaling and stuff. Okay. But as I said, I downloaded it this afternoon, but there was an EV60 important paper yesterday that I'm still going through. And so that usurps this. Okay, I know, Amy, you're planning to go to the Olympics, so this is your question. No, but Audrey you. is. Audrey, your former technician? Yeah, she, she's she been talking about going, yeah. She's been talking about going for, like, years. Her whole family's really into going to Japan. Her oh. sister did, like, a, ma a PhD in, like, Japanese history, and yeah. So Robert wants to know if we think the Olympics should go on, given that Japan's vaccination rates are three and a half percent. What do you think, Dr. Rosenfeld? Uh, I'm more concerned about the fact that they are having a very large outbreak and just had to like close off some parts of the country, I believe. Um, if, the va if the Olympians are vaccinated, it should be fine. I presume they're having people in the stands, right? So that's the problem. No, no, oh. I don't think. I don't know. No, no people in the stands. So the athletes, yeah, if the athletes are vaccinated, uh, should be okay. I thought there were people watching, in which case I would say no. But No, I don't think so. I think I think Audrey has, has always talked about wanting to go and like that she was purchasing tickets and they were reserving for certain events. But I don't think so. I don't think that they're having fans. I mean, but I don't know. The problem is the vet, the athletes have to stay in the village. They can't go out wandering about. They're going to get infected. And I'm sure Why? If they're vaccinated, would they get infected and cause disease? If they're vaccinated, you know it should be Even fine. Even if they're vaccinated and the vaccine efficacy is 70%, they could still get mild COVID, and that would not really be good for their performance. You know, for uh, you and me, wouldn't affect us doing plaque assays, but for a 50-yard dash or whatever it is, a 100-yard dash, uh-uh. Could be. Um, well, 
the thing is, is that in the middle of the pandemic, they had like Wimbledon, not Wimbledon, but they definitely had the U.S. Open and the French Open was in and stuff. So they have a there's infrastructure, at least here in the U.S. for having these kind of events with those kind of athletes. But I don't really know enough about it, to be honest. I'm not really following all right. Do we agree with last week's CDC guidelines on fully vaccinated people shedding their masks? I do not and will continue to mask until it's safe. What do you think, Amy? Um, I think it's a little early. I would have preferred to be far closer to 50% fully vaccinated and we're only like at 38. Yeah, I still wear a mask. I don't go to very many places. I don't still would not go to a restaurant. Even though I was asked to go to one next week, I said, no, 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 not until maybe July. So I'm not a big fan of it. I think uh, a lot of people just take their masks off, even if they're not vaccinated, right? What would stop them? Honor system? Well, <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know how that works out for you. Um, if it were, if it, if we were such an honorable society, then Fauci wouldn't have had to come out and say, people are misinterpreting what the CDC came. And my response was, well, maybe you should have thought prudently before you are right over your press release before it could be misconstrued. So he had to come out and say, it does not say that unvaccinated should go maskless. But it's yep. it's holy, right? It's not very tight. Which is the chat where you spoke about HIV vaccine? Are you talking about a TWIV? I don't know what chat you're talking about. Uh, if you mean a TWIV, we could look up the episode. I don't remember. I don't know. Mike, uh, I just sent you a link to a website where you could look that up. I forgot what the name of it is. The, the guy who made this site, he's at UPenn. He's going to be on TWIV uh, in David. a couple of weeks. David, I forgot what. But it's, it's a site where you could, look at, you could look at all the uh, repurposed drug trials. And uh, I put it in there. Anyway, Mike, you just look and you'll find it. Update on myocarditis. I haven't heard anything. Have you, Amy? No. What's wrong with the honor system? Right. Science journalist has tweeted to the CDC head that the latter has let the genie out of the bottle, so when the next surge hits, few will remask. Well, that could be, but I don't think we're going to have another surge. We are at a what are we approaching? 40% fully vaccinated, Amy? Yes. Yeah, we're not going to have another surge. You could have local outbreaks still, but not a nationwide surge. So I don't like the optional masking if you're vaxxed. I mean, I think they're, they think that it's going to get people to vaccinate, but I don't think they're thinking clearly to borrow a phrase from Amy. No, it's going to do the opposite. It's going to reduce, it's going to enhance hesitancy or not getting vaccinated. As I've always said, the minute that you say that, that the pandemic is over or you don't need to come back and you say the numbers are declining, the next person is going to say, oh, why do I need to go get vaccinated? I have other stuff to do today. So yeah, this was not a prudent decision. Preprint says they found lower interferon gamma and less response from TLR seven weeks after vaccination with mRNA. The media are amplifying that the vaccine messed with our innate immune. You really, you need to debunk this. You know this paper, Amy? Preprint. Uh, I saw it, but I have not read it. As I said, there is a big EV68 paper. You surplus everything. Mm. I don't know why the press is messing with preprints. You know what? They have to go ask people what they think, and they're going to get biased responses. What do you think, Amy? I believe that they will. I have no faith in the media of doing the right thing, getting both sides of the story, because it's difficult, right? It's more time-consuming. 
and uh, it's more work. They don't I like to ch- do too much church work. this weekend at a full room. Only you and two other families were masking. I hope they genuinely misunderstood the headline. Mm. One can only hope. So my friend, the musician, um, who plays for the who plays the pipe organ, his church hasn't even deci- hasn't discussed hasn't made a decision about it about whether or not they're going back. So far, they're still choir on Zoom, services on Zoom. I think that mm-hmm. they I think he's expe- anticipating that it's not going to be until September. What's the science on Sinovac? Well, Sinovac is the inactivated vaccine from China, which, you know, is in a couple of countries. The efficacy was 60, 60-ish percent, I think. Um, I'm not sure that the, the data have been published. Uh, that's the problem, yeah. So we don't know how to evaluate it. Yeah, that's a problem. But I would say if it's the only vaccine you can get, just get it. As as Daniel Griffin says, don't don't miss an opportunity to vaccinate. Well, Ronald watched a doc on Curiosity Stream about Maurice Hilleman. Yeah, he um, had an incredible career. I have to say, Curiosity Stream used to be a sponsor of TWIB years ago when we did ads. Before we had many people supporting us, I took ads. And you can make a good amount of money, but I decided not to. And um, we'll see if we can support it on donations. Because I think ads are annoying, right? You're in the middle of understand, hearing a discussion about a vaccine and you want to hear an ad? No. I don't like that. Well, why do they have to be in the middle? Why can't you just put them all at the front or all at the beginning? Well, you have to sp- spread them out. You can't put them Why? all at the front because people will just skip it, <laughs> right? Also, there are these. I don't, I so don't here's know. the other I thing. Let me that. let me just tell you a quick story. So a lot of people will say, "Why don't you go to Spotify?" So if I put my pod on Spotify, then they own it, and they will run ads and stick them in wherever they want throughout the pod, and I don't see a penny of the income. So I am not enriching Spotify. I'm sorry if you like Spotify, but I mean, at least give me a cut. But I don't like ads. That's why I started a podcast, because I got tired of ads on radio. Anyway, uh, Hilleman is great, was. And you talk a little bit of, about ivermectin. Yeah, many uh, Several countries are uh, using it extensively. And um, so I was on a call the other day where... They reviewed uh, what's going on with it. Now, um, there's this website that I uh, pasted in earlier. Let me find it for you again. It collects all the uh, information uh, on clinical trials for COVID using repurposed um, drugs. It's called the Corona Project, cdcn.org slash corona. And you can search for... Um, ivermectin, for example. So let's do that. Let's search for ivermectin and tell you how many... Why all of a sudden it's going to change from it from being an effect, un, having no effect to being <laughs> effective? So there are five trials underway. Actually, 82 trials are underway. And if you look at the results so far, they're mixed. Some say it didn't do anything. Some say it harmed. And one trial I see here was positive. And so the fellow who made this site, he said, what we need is a 4,000 person randomized clinical trial of ivermectin for COVID because none of the trials have been adequately done. Now, you can listen to people say they use it in India and it saves lives. I suspect it's not being an antiviral because (laughs) the amount of a drug you need to inhibit is pretty high, and I'm not sure you can get that in people, but it may be acting as an anti-something else and saving lives. I just don't know. Why can't we just tell them to go listen to Dan Nill's episodes discussing ivermectin earlier this year? Yeah, well, a lot of people don't like what he said. 
Well, <laughs> the truth and liking something are sometimes two very different things. Correct. There's lots of times I do science and the answer is not what I like. Right. But it is the answer. Did you see this article in the Times, Amy, about dividing anti-vax era into four discrete categories? Yes. Yes, I did. What are the four categories? Um, there's the wait and see people. <laughs> there's the people who don't believe that COVID is really a problem. There's the people who think that, you know, it's government manipulation and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a, the fourth category. Um, I forgot what the fourth category is. But yeah, it came out today. Um, I didn't know. I Well, I saw it today. Um, and no, I don't think it helps at all. I think actually it gives the people who are vaccine, who are on the fence, more reason to tip over in the wrong direction. I don't think it was well, um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a well thought out um, advertisement for vaccination. I think what it, yeah, I don't think it was well thought out. If your goal is public health and safety of, you know, the public, this was mm -hmm. not well thought out at all. But, um, you know, shocking, Amy, shocking. I was just about to say. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. And then there's the ones, the fourth category, this Richard Seymour is right. The fourth category is the ones that distrust the medical system because we have not, the white man has not always been nice. And that is also, that is a huge problem is that we have not always been nice and done the right things. We have kind of thought that the people that were different from us should be our tester pin cushions. And that is not good. I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, when an infected cell presents pro viral proteins on its surface, is it only the envelope or others? No, it's all of them presenting uh, for antigen presentation. It would be all the viral proteins. You know, the, the, um, well, the, all the viral proteins that are made are chopped up by the proteasome in the cell, and they're shipped up into the plasma membrane in the context of MHC. So not just spike, but many other viral proteins as well. That we don't, yeah. It's not a membrane anchor. It's, it's displayed in a big plasma membrane protein, protein called complex. MHC. Protein complex. Complex called the MHC. The transmembrane protein complex. Little peptides, right? Chopped up. Mm -hmm. My university, okay, that was to Susan, but is only recommending we wear masks. Are they recommending or requiring vaccination? That's what they should be doing. Yes, but so the CDC guidelines actually say that if you are you know, or the state, at least here in the state in New York, the interpretation of the CDC guidelines are if you are a, like a university, a store, a private business, something or other, and you want people to wear masks, you can have a rule that says you must wear a mask, you know. So like I went to buy coffee today at Zabar's. The sign says you must wear a mask when you enter the store. Got my shingle shot. Strong side effects. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Knocks you out. Any new news on Novavax? So they have what a was... manufacturing problem. They don't have enough raw materials to make it. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't know. Is... I'm not in charge. Yeah. That's too bad that they didn't plan it out carefully, right? Yes, it is. But, you know, apparently somebody gets the big box who, you know, that whose job it is to plan it, maybe would like to return the big box. So uh, Gary liked Twiv 756, and I believe Amy was on that one. That was Friday, right? right? It was yeah. Friday, yep. Yeah, we talked about polio and Sabin. 
And the fact that he never believed in certain things was just so ironic because he was a smart guy. It's the highlight of my week. Thank you so much. Very kind of you. It is uh, very we're, nice. We're both well, right? I'm good. Looks like we'll have to come back after we watch Handmaid's Tale. Really? You're going to leave us for Handmaid's? Can't you? What like is Handmaid's? It's a TV show. Oh, I don't know. All right. Pros and cons of getting chicken pox, natural infection versus a vaccine. Well, you get natural infection, then you're going to have latent virus in you forever, and then you can get shingles later on. So better to get chickenpox vaccine because chickenpox itself can be pretty nasty to kids and then you avoid getting shingles later on another uh, person who liked twiv 756 you would collect for the march of dimes how cool yeah you remember that they raised half a billion dollars in dimes isn't that great it is great is it possible that viruses are here on earth for more time than any living thing Okay, well, they're not this is, living. So it depends how, what you think a virus is. So, you know, our definition of virus is that it needs to get inside of a cell in order to reproduce. So if that's correct, then, and, you know, our definitions are what we make up pretty much. If that's correct, then, uh, no, the viruses were here after the first cell. But I think there were self-replicating nucleic acids before cells and, and those are viral because they became viruses at some point. Well, they also became cells at some point. So then they're cellular. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, so, everything came from viruses. That's right. Everything came from RNA. Can wild type based or inactivated vaccines cause syncytia formation in the body? I don't know what wild type means. Is that spike only? Is that adenovirus? Is that an attenuated I virus? I don't know what don't it know. means. But an inactivated will not do that, right? No. Well, it causes it, it, formation. No. Is there an art piece collection using a visual of plaque assays as inspiration or could be interpreted being inspired by such? Something like comic book style blood spatter? No, I but, don't know quite what that means, but I have a wall of polio on my wall at Columbia. Has anyone seen it? I'm very familiar with it since it fell on me several times. Here, I'm going to show it to you. Oh, goody. I'm not going to drone. Don't worry. Here, I'm not worried see. about that. I'm going to show I just you. Don't know. I just Here. don't know. See, that's the wall of polio. What do you think? You know, well, have, you can have the wall, and I'm having a mobile of virus. I'm, you know, whatever. But I don't to answer. Don't I don't know what this is. I don't, I'm not quite sure what you're. What do I think of the Lancet paper saying that B1 binds to ACE2 two times higher affinity and one, three, five, one, four, and six higher affinity? Does this mean more fitness or more transmissibility? No, not at all. Cannot assume that those properties equate to more fitness or more transmissibility right actually Dr. i Rose. would say that i would my inherent up uh, my inherent gut feeling is that they would be detrimental because it's hard to get off the receptor then right yep you need to get off at some point so it's too hard to get off so actually you don't want a higher affinity yeah so the problem hoplite 76 is that people they view this virus receptor interaction as all that matters and if it's more if it's higher affinity then it's better but no 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 think clearly as amy would say well this is a person this is based upon somebody else somebody's work on a different virus we went through this remember that and then it had it was attenuated and then he didn't like that answer, so he poo-pooed it. You remember that? 
-hmm. It was the right answer, but the wrong answer because he didn't like it. And all of a sudden, science became, how does person X like to answer the question? And that is not how science works. Canada now has a percent first dose higher than the U.S., despite the U.S. starting much sooner. Is hesitancy the only thing holding America back? Is that true? Is it higher percent in Canada? I do not know. I don't know. Excuse me. And I'm not commenting because then all these people start writing in crap like, oh, she only knows about Montreal. Montreal's like New York. It's not part of Canada. I'm like, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this one. The Canadian government yeah. recently inv announced investment of $200 million into vaccine manufacturing. That's great. 2024. Wait, but it's 2024. It's 2027, according to the article. The point is that right now they don't have it. That's what we were commenting on. A lot of people wrote in and said, oh, but they're fixing it. You need to read. No, that's not the point. <laughs> well, and then here's here's the other thing. OK, so when I was a postdoc, they built the building directly behind the McIntyre or in front of the McIntyre, depending on how you want to look at it. And they decided that instead of putting the tunnels that connect the buildings together, that they were going to put a ramp together through the lunch, the cafeteria in the McIntyre building. So they built mm -hmm. that ramp in both directions and they kind of missed. And so there's a little jag, jog to, to like go to the other, to the building. So it's not straight. Right. And then they forgot that the lab that is, really the important lab and why they really built this building is on the sixth floor. And so this ramp goes to the fifth floor and the elevators that go the entire span of the building are on the other side of the building. So then they had to put in an elevator shaft that only goes from the fit from this ramp to the sixth floor. I heard that story. So according yeah. to so, like, I'm thinking even if, you think it's going to be completed in 2024? Let's get yeah. real here. You're so not making Brian, any vaccine for 20 for another 10 years. Ryan retracts that it's 2027. Yeah, I know. That's what the answer says. Raphael said Canada 39% first dose, US 48%. Okay. All right. Um, there was one here. Here we go. Do PFUs have different sizes and shapes that vary with each kind of virus? Yeah. Plaque farming in it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And they vary with virus. And also, cell if type. you use a different kind of overlay, different kind of cell. If you use agar versus agarose or different purifications of overlay, yeah, you can get all different sizes. Yep. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, that's a funny? It's a comment I have to get to later, but um, I'm not sure. 80% of the Japanese population do not want to have the Olympics. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see what Arthur. Now I'm fully vaccinated. I've never been infected to my knowledge. What is the proper test to determine if I've been infected? Well, you'd need an antibody test where the, they're looking for nucleocapsid antibodies because you, you got the spike in the vaccine. So you're making spike antibodies. Yep. Well, I think Amy has a view on this. What are your thoughts on Shushat and Messonnier leaving the CDC within a week of each other? I don't know. I don't know the politics of the CDC. So it, so Shushat is like 65, and apparently she was ready to retire, and she had let it be known that she was retiring. And she's actually retiring, retiring. Whereas Nancy was forced out, she's like 55 and she's actually going to a philanthropic um, entity, like a think tank. Maybe philanthropic is not the right word. I believe she's going to a think tank in California. And basically she got pushed out because her views, which probably were correct, don't agree with uh, Walensky's or whatever the Rochelle's last name is and didn't agree with Trump. So she's ruffled two sets of feathers. And so she was pushed out. And it's unfortunate. She's also the one who um, is uh, really um, 
big into respiratory pathogens, just not, not just SARS-CoV or COVs, but like EV60, rhinos, flu, paramyxos. She has a more broad perspective. So we're you know what a little, I mean? Uh, yeah, a little argument about the percentage of vaccination in the U.S. and Canada. And someone said, well, who cares? Is it vaccine nationalism? Yeah, we had a letter in TWIV today, so we have to have no more of this vaccine nationalism. It's not good. We're all in this together. Oy. You have any curiosity to do a science trip to a South American jungle researching a new type of virus in a local bat species, Indiana Jones style? Yeah, if I can bring my video camera and record it, you bet. I don't think okay, I Okay, well, you, no, I'm not going. You can no. go with Simon. No, no, no. I think you go, this is how I travel. You go to the four star hotel, and that's considered camping. You get up, you have a leisurely breakfast, then you go do some hiking for like four hours, six hours max. You come back, you take a shower, you go for the la European snack afternoon, late afternoon snack, you know, wine, cheese, crackers. And then at eight o'clock, you're at dinner. <laughs> there's no, there's, there's no bugs. There's no bat spray. There's no nothing. I don't understand this. But you also strapped a canoe to your head several years ago, and I didn't understand that either. Through phase three RCT, should the volunteers be tested for HIV prior to receiving vaccine placebo? So you're talking about an HIV vaccine trial. Yes, you have to be HIV negative to be in those trials. Yeah, and also, yeah, the HIV is trashing CD4 cells, which will impact your ability to make antibodies. If vaccines do cause myocarditis, it's very rare. Their benefit still vastly outweighs the risk. But patients should be appraised in advance to know what to watch out for. This is a very level-headed view of it. Yes. It's good. Nobody's going to get vaccinated because they don't have to wear a mask. So when this doesn't work, they will fear monger variants more. You think? Good. It's Amy, a good cycle. Yeah, I think it's a well-thought-out <laughs> cycle. I'm glad to know that the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times and various other things will be making a lot of money. India variant detected in Texas. It doesn't matter. It's going to be detected everywhere. And as Mark says, there's very little yeah. evidence that the Indian variant is more transmissible according to the UK. Yep. Uh, thanks for answering the question about the Olympics. Uh, I believe there will be spectators, but not overseas spectators. Okay, just from uh, Japan. But if still, if they're not vaccinated, this is a big problem. Uh, Osterholm has the press hypnotized on the news person said Osterholm has been right the whole time. He agrees with the new mask mandate. Well, they can say whatever they want about Osterholm. I don't care. We're all wrong some point of the time. What's your predictions for Memorial Day and 4th of July? What do you think, Amy? Are they going to go up? Yeah, I think there'll be a bit of an increase, but not as not anywhere as near a spike. I think families will get together, but you're mostly outdoors. So I'm not really that concerned. I think we have enough. We're getting a high enough vaccination rate so that we're not going to have a big problem. New York City no, is I offering, just think, you know, you'll go blip, blip, free tickets to basketball games for people who get vaccinated. Okay, I'm not going. <laughs> well, it doesn't say you have to go to the basketball game now. Who knows when it is? Like some, I've heard like ads where they have offered you tickets to do something, and they say, "Oh, you can cash in in two years." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're just not going because you're not a basketball fan. But you know, if they gave you you know, Pod Save America tickets that you could cash in in two years, I'm sure you'd be fine. How about TWIV tickets? Can New York City well, give you don't have a tickets? studio. You don't have a studio, so let's not go there. When you I get a studio, we'll readdress. I bet some people in New York would come to a TWIV, live TWIV. I'm sure they will when you get a studio. I'm not standing outside in the rain. Is it possible to get long COVID if you're vaccinated? I think it's in theory possible, but no one has uh, documented it, right? Because even people with mild infections can develop long COVID. So if you most develop people, a mild infection after a vaccination, yeah. So most people who had long COVID developed were from mild or asymptomatic infections. 
I like this. The media promotes selective science, not balanced science. That's a good quote maybe for our op-ed, Amy. It's true. Well, we can't steal whale oil beef hooked quote. No, you can't steal. People who remain unvaccinated probably didn't believe in masks in the first place. Yep, that's probably correct. There's probably some overlap in those populations. I know you disagree with the CDC, but I'm happy with this unannouncement. Hope you're not implying we're all doomed. No, no, you're not doomed. I'm just saying I'm going to wear my mask. And anyone else who wants to can. And I see a lot of people, but in, in New York, still wearing masks, right, Amy? Yeah, but I'm sure as the summer goes on, it will decrease. Yeah, and I'm going to stay here in my basement, which will soon become a studio uh, in New York City, right? Yes. Well, I'm going to have to take a train, so I'm going to be around people again. Yes. Uh, is Garrett, Rory Garrett, a fear monger like Osterholm? To a certain extent. Yeah, to a certain extent. But, you know, there's, these individuals... Uh, base their careers to a certain extent on fear mongering. And we don't. We just give you what's the word? We don't give you selective science. We give you balanced science. Right, Amy? Yes. I just finished saying lots of times I get the right answer, but it's the wrong answer. Ask my technician. She'll tell you all about it. She'll tell you that I have a lot of right answers that are the wrong answer. Like reinforce this with Edmund too. You can talk to Edmund. What happens in the body after a person gets an mRNA vaccine in the next few days? You want to tackle that, Amy? Sure. So you get the mRNA vaccine. The mRNA gets translated. The protein gets produced. It then gets digested or it doesn't. It can either go directly to the cell membrane or it can be presented as peptides to your immune cells. And then your T cells and B cells recognize it and they go back to the lymph nodes and your B cells start making antibodies and your T cells become cytotoxic or not cytotoxic. And that's what happens. It takes a long time. Three weeks is not that long. Yeah, so the mRNA is gone in a few days, but the the cell, the immune response continues to evolve after yes. that. Uh, Gene got the was in the Pfizer trial in September. Should I worry about my immunity waning? You should not worry. No, your immunity will be fine, as will your T cells. You'll be fine. Don't listen yes. to the naysayers. Yes. Any news on universal Corona vaccine? Well, we did on TWIV yesterday, which we'll be posting in a few hours, a very interesting nanoparticle vaccine where they put the receptor binding domain of spike onto the nanoparticles. And it, it uh, induces cross-reactive immunity among a, a variety of human and bat coronas. So I think that's very promising for sure. Yeah, there is another one. Yeah, there are a couple out there. Do you have any suggestions for concise, effective, and medically accurate answers to persuade anti-vaxxers or the vaccine hesitant to vaccinate? The vaccines are safe and effective, and they will prevent you from dying of COVID. And if that's not enough, then there's not much you can do. Thank you, Les, for your super sticker. Really appreciate your donation to the studio, as Susan as well. Thank you for your super sticker. Really appreciate your generosity, folks. This is all run on your support. Can't do it without you. Are people in the U.S. going on holiday abroad? I, I hear more and more people talking about going on vacation. Um, if I go abroad, I'm not going on vacation. I would go to work. But I'm not going abroad until next year for for uh, science. Maybe Amy, too, right? Where am I going? And Amy, in general, are people in the U.S. going on holiday? Do you know? Do you get the sense? Uh, I don't know anybody who's going abroad for holiday. I know someone who's going abroad 
to give a talk in Nice. Hmm. Um, but I don't know anybody who's going abroad for holiday. Thank you, Ditching, for your support. Really appreciate it. And apparently Richard listens to Twiv on Spotify. Oh, boy. Somebody put it there. Uh, do you hear ads? I hope not, because if they're running ads, we're not getting any of the benefits. Oh, well. Uh, will COVID virus eventually evolve a way to escape the current vaccines? I'm thinking no. I don't see why it would. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I agree. You know, I think mean, like, gonna... I think like, I think like it'll be more like measles doesn't evolve a way to escape the vaccines, nor does polio. Yeah, but flu does, right? It's not flu. There's not eight segments that get rearranged. I think. I agree with Amy, but I think they're going to change the vaccine because they're going to look at the neutralization data and say, oh, this is not good, and they're going to change it, and we'll never know if they had to or not, right? That's well, they've already think. changed it, right? They've well, already they done the it. clinical trial, and yeah. there, yeah. I believe that there's been press releases from Pfizer about when they're releasing a modified thing in the fall. So it's already been changed, so it's kind of a moot point. All right, no ads on Spotify. Great. Merck said ivermectin doesn't work. Okay, they they invented it. <laughs> but you'll get people arguing, oh, they use it in India. It saves lives. I mean, remember, that's not a clinical trial. You can't really conclude from that. It's hearsay. Thank you, Sandy, for your support. Uh, really Appreciate it. It's killing the worms. Maybe that's what ivermectin is doing. Yeah. Here's one for yeah, Amy. Worms are not worms are not <laughs> viruses or COVID is not SARS CoV two is no, not. No, no. But if you're infected with a worm, maybe you would die with, from COVID unless you get rid oh, of the worm. Okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Here's one for you. Why don't we have vaccines against the common cold? Too many serotypes. <clears throat> no cross reactivity. You don't think we'll ever have a rhinovirus vaccine, Amy? No. I think the person who thinks that, who wrote a nature pet medicine paper, who thinks that injecting 40 serotypes of, of virus into probably IP into wild type mice and saying, oh, look, I got an antibody response has a big problem because there's no animal model. For disease so until you solve the animal model for disease no vaccine ivermectin was favorably discussed in dr campbell's live stream okay dr campbell is is welcome to favorably discuss it but uh, the trials are pretty mixed someone said here should i give up <clears throat> well peggy give I don't up know what, what? You, give up what uh you gotta Chocolate? give us more data no Booze? No. <laughs> Heroin? Yes. I mean, give up what? Shocking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ivermectin is, is, yes, ivermectin is an antiparasite. That's right. But it had some antiviral activity in cells and culture. And that's yeah, why people started using it. Lots of things have antiviral activity in culture and don't go any further. Do I get to copyright shocking? Is, sure. Would I make any money? You could put a little trademark <laughs> up uh, at the top of shocking. Uh, Arlene, I will get you. Uh, why don't you send me an email, vincent at microbe.tv, and I'll send you payment information. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Why can't they just use your Patreon account? She doesn't. She's not comfortable with it. That's fine. Oh, okay. PCR cannot tell infectivity. That's correct. It just measures yep. pieces of RNA. Right, Amy? Right. What kind of test can? Well, a plaque assay or any yes. kind of uh, infectivity assay, TCID50, for example, anything that measures infectious reproducing virus. And a plaque right. assay is great. Okay, we're at quarter to nine. Two more questions and then I got to go. 
Uh, Daniel Griffin said ivermectin does not work nor remdesivir. Yes, but it's cheap. They're getting remdesivir cheap. Great. Doesn't work. Well, let's not pay much for it. Thank you, David, for your contribution. What do you think about ivermectin as a prophylactic? <clears throat> no. No data. No data. Okay, let's see. Let's have a couple of questions for Amy. Two this questions one, and then I gotta go. What proportion of spike from vaccines makes it to the surface? I have no idea. I don't think anyone knows. Do you? Right, Amy? No one knows. No one even knows what portion of spike that gets produced in a cell makes it to the cell membrane. Hmm. Yeah, more more uh, ivermectin here, more polio vaccine. Any chance you can get somebody on TWIV on a universal flu? Yeah, we could get... Uh, Why don't you get Florian Kramer? Florian Kramer. Um, I'm sure Peter would love to come and talk about it. Oh, we got a mention in the Columbia Alumni Magazine, Columbia Podcast, to keep you in the know. Great. It's about time. Very good. When we get a vaccine for norovirus? <clears throat> I believe years. it's being worked on. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. It's being worked More on. like 10. Does the chickenpox vaccine stay in us forever, a.k.a. the virus that causes... No, it's believe. not a virus. It's, it's like a VLP. Well, it's, an attenu or it's, it's an attenuated virus. Oh, the chicken uh, pox. No, the chicken pox is attenuated. The, the shingles is a, is a spike, as you say. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got confused. All right, one more and then I have to go. Let me find a question for you. You know, something. Oh, here you go. What makes some kinds of virus be more mutagenic than others? Well, I don't like to quantitate mutagenicity between viruses. It's like quantitating pathogenesis. But some polymerases are less fidelitous than others. So they make more errors. So like polio polymerase makes a lot of errors because it replicates really fast, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas the coronavirus polymerase makes errors, but then they get corrected because they have uh, the exoactivity. Right. And DNA right. and herpes virus polymerase makes very little errors because it takes advantage of the DNA repair recombination replication machinery of the cell. Right. Yep. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. I will see you tomorrow. I'm sure we have stuff to do, but I don't know what it is. Yep. See you tomorrow. Have a good evening. <laughs> okay. and thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Okay. We got, I just want to show you folks the wall of polio because Fozzie said it looks like a skyscraper. Yeah, I took a low angle photo there just to give it dramatic. But let's look, let's take another look. So here's some pictures of people in front of the wall. Let's see, Amy's here, All right? <clears throat> so that's goes from ceiling to floor, basically, in the office. I put it together myself. I glued it all in there. There's no more sofa here. I got rid of that. So you could stand right in front of it. So if you come visit, you can um, get your picture in front of the wall. Isn't that cool? Uh, on Tuesday, finished the crossover shots for Novavax. They mentioned the efficacy, efficacy being good in the manufacturing problem. Yeah, it's too bad they have a manufacturing problem. <clears throat> Okay, Jamie asks, are viral infections necessary for evolution of a species? Is it a stressor that promotes fitness? Absolutely. Definitely both ways. You know, the hosts help viruses evolve and the viruses help hosts evolve. Our immune system evolution has pretty much been driven by viruses and other infectious agents. So absolutely, it does uh, put pressure. Now, you may ask, what if there weren't any viruses around? Well, then then we'd have a big problem because a lot of the recycling of elements on Earth is done by virus infection. So, got to have them. And as Dixon de Pommier says, parasites keep 
populations in check so they don't overgrow. Good question. <clears throat> Uh, asking my kids for a sculpture of SARS-CoV-2. Where did you get yours? You're talking about the one uh, back here. Uh, that that was by Mark Holger, H-O-E-L-G-E-R. Send me an email, vincent at microbe.tv. I'll give you his contact. I am having a um, another one made um, to, to represent my... Um, My polio virus bound to its receptor. So let, let me show you that here. I think I can share my desktop. There you go. So yeah, this is what he's making for me next. <laughs> he's making so that's in, in magenta. That's polio virus uh, bound to the receptor in blue. Sixty copies of the receptor. So we, I, I worked on this project and published it with a number of others. So uh, that'll be cool. Looking forward to that. Maybe I'll put it in the uh, wall, the um, studio. Can I explain titration? So titration, you uh, let's say I give you a tube of virus. I don't have any tubes here, even empty ones. I give you a tube of virus. Actually, I do, but it's too far away. Uh, and I say, how, tell me how much virus is here. And one way is to do a plaque assay. So you. You take and you make dilutions of the virus. So what is a dilution? You take, say, 0.1 ml of the virus and you put it into 0.9 mLs of, of saline. That's a 1 to 10 dilution. You keep doing that all the way out to 10 to the minus 8th. And then you, you put um, a little bit on cells, cover them with agar, and then you will get plaques formed uh, on those cells. And, uh, you know, my wall of polio is a wall of plaque assays. Uh, let me see if I can find uh, one of my pictures of plaque assays. Here we go. Here's one. Yeah, it's not mine, but it's good enough. Oh, where did it go? Oh, this is actually a good uh, il it indication. So these are the dilutions. You make your serial dilutions there, and you plate out a little bit of each. You put an agar overlay, and then each virus infects the cell and spreads and makes a little hole in the monolayer. That's pretty good. It's not mine, but it's pretty good. That's what titration is. Uh, can you say why you don't like the Brits talking about transmissibility? Okay, so they don't have any direct data for transmissibility. Here's the story. They say there are two things they do uh, which they say means that the variants are more transmissible. The first is they take people infected with the variants and they do a nasal swab and they measure the RNA by PCR. They say, oh, they're making more RNA. So what? It's a single time point, and it's not infectious virus. I don't care about that at all. All right, so throw that out. And that's why, in part, they get 50 to 70% more transmissible. The other part is they calculate the reproductive index. The reproductive index of a virus is a number which tells you how many people you will infect if you're infected. And for SARS-CoV-2, it's between two and three. So what they do, <clears throat> they look at the cases in the UK, and they look at the number of cases over time, and they recalculate the R naught. Wrong, wrong way to do it. You have to take into account people interactions. The R naught formula doesn't just have virus contributions; it has the interactions of people, and they never take that into account. Wherever there's a surge in a variant, it's because people are transmitting; they're getting together, like in India right now. So why are these variants moving around the world and displacing ancestral strains? So that's all about fitness. The virus has a little bit of an advantage, maybe because it's changing anthogenically. This happens with influenza virus all the time. You get a little bit uh, higher fitness, and it, it's enough to displace previous strains. It does not mean it's transmitting better. It's just displacing the previous strains. So that's they never talk about it that way. They just say transmission. They scare the hell out of people. People think it's going from one person to another more efficiently. And that's not it. It's fitness. And, you know, it's a nuance. I agree. But it's not the same thing. Transmission and fitness are not the same thing. So that's why I object to them saying it's more transmissible. And as they look closer, they people go, oh, you know what? This isn't more transmissible. 
And the people who keep saying in the press they're more transmissible, they just repeat what they've heard. It drives me nuts. <clears throat> Um, I got two doses of uh, Moderna. I don't know what, yeah, Amy either got Moderna or Pfizer. Because we got it quite a while ago. Amy got it really early on. I think she got Pfizer because she works in a BSL-3 with SARS-CoV-2. And I got it because I'm old. Here in New Jersey, a couple of months ago, they said, okay, anybody over 65 can go. And I made an appointment and went. And now here in New Jersey, you can go into the local ACME, walk in and get a vaccine. Will the EUAs ever turn into fully approved vaccines? I think so, yeah. I think they're working on it. They have to collect data for another two years, right? That's part of the approval process. You need two years' worth of data. And so to people who say, ah, oh, they're not properly tested, they are going on for another two years. What do I say to a friend who thinks there will be long-term effects? There aren't any long-term effects. So Paul Offit, when he came on to it, he said, there are no long-term effects. There are nothing, there's nothing we don't see after two months. There are rare things like the uh, clotting issue that we saw in one in a million, but no long-term effects. So we catch everything in a couple of months afterwards. That's the fact. The, the reason we look for two more years is because we want to know how long immunity lasts, right? Durability of immunity, that they're safe. <clears throat> Thank you, Bad Cat, for your contribution. Love you, even though you call people with my opinion on origins moon hoaxers. I never said, never used the word moon hoaxer. No. You can have your opinion, but you can't have your own facts. The facts are this virus is highly related to viruses in bats, and no, no similar virus was present in a lab. But you can, you can have your own uh, opinions about it. I don't... I, I just don't think that um, should drive the narrative, that's all. Are kids st still being given? Yeah, for sure. In most countries, it's still required. Here in the U.S., every kid has to get polio vaccine uh, to go to school, for sure. Uh, Andrew is Amy's friend in Montreal. She talks about him a lot, yeah. She gets a, a lot of Montreal news from Andrew, yeah. I'm two weeks post Pfizer. What happens now if I'm exposed? Here's what happens. So right now you have a lot of antibodies in your blood and in your nasopharyngeal cavity. And if you inhale some virus, those antibodies are going to grab it and neutralize it. And you're probably not even going to get infected. However, in a year, you're going to have much lower levels of antibodies. You will have immune memory, though. So the virus comes in in a year post-vaccine. The virus is going to infect your nasopharyngeal cells. And then maybe two days later, the immune memory is going to kick in and limit infection. So you're not going to really transmit. You're not going to get any disease of any sort. And that'll be it. So that's how it works. You're good. Oh, boy, we are just getting to <laughs> stuff that was being said at the very beginning, you know, the percentage of vaccination, which we really don't need to talk about. Everybody should be vaccinated. It's unfortunate that some countries have a lot and others do not. Um, it's too bad. Uh, Julie, um, Amy just picked that on TWIV. You know, we do these picks of the week where we recommend things. So she picked Michael Lewis's book last week. I haven't... Um, had a chance to read it yet. Um, but, you know, the CDC has a long history of doing good and bad. You know, Michael David Teller, who writes for my blog, virology.blog, he's been running a, a decades-long uh, campaign to, you know, show how they screwed up with MECFS. Will the Nipah virus ever become easily transmissible? Nipah virus... <clears throat> Ebola virus, right? These are all MERS, coronavirus. They all burn out eventually, and then you have a new spillover. I can't really say 
if it will ever happen. People are worried about it. And so they, you know, for that reason, we should be doing surveillance. For NEPA, we should have a vaccine ready in case it does. And there is a vaccine, actually. There's a, um, a spike protein vaccine that works. Actually, they use it in horses to protect them against Hendra virus, another bat-borne uh, paramyxovirus. And so that is being pushed through uh, clinical trials. So I, I think we should have a vaccine ready because who knows, and um, we, we shouldn't be caught um, short. But we do have an Ebola virus vaccine, so that's good in case it does become transmissible. I personally think it's not uh, because it hasn't in a long time, but who knows? But do we know if the breakthrough of the Yankees have had their genetic sequencing so we know what it was? Uh, no, probably they're doing it, though. And it just, look, they're testing them. Most populations are not being tested, especially after vaccination. So you don't know if you get infected. But this is an example of what happens. You get vaccinated, and then you may have a small infection. I said so close to vaccination, I doubt you would get infected, but apparently they are. And I'll bet their cycle threshold values are pretty high, which means small amounts of RNA. It's um, what you would expect. They didn't get sick. That's the key. So they're not really breakthrough, but the press is calling them breakthrough. They're just what would happen in a vaccinated person. And normally you wouldn't know this because you don't test people after vaccination, right? You don't test people after measles vaccine to see if they're getting infected. No, we're in a pandemic. That's why we're doing this. And Cosmos Trek, I don't know. I don't do baseball. But I used to. I used to play and I used to be into it. Not anymore because I want to look at viruses. But no, if you're 3-0 and and your team has a 10-run lead, you don't swing. No. Everybody knows that, right? <laughs> when should a COVID-infected person be vaccinated after infection? Uh, Daniel says about a month after you've recovered. No more symptoms. But he also says if, you know, don't waste the chance being vaccinated. But nowadays, probably you don't anymore. Yeah, so this we talked about up top. I don't think it's reprogramming anything. Let's get it through peer review, and then we'll take a look at it. I'm moving away from preprints because... Um, it's just too much stuff that's wrong and the press can't sort it out. And then they ask someone and the someone they ask doesn't get it right either. It's as Amy would say, it's a shit show. Eric, uh, that'd be cool. Eric has been listening to Twitter for ages. I have a piece of art in, in my office by Eric. Yeah. Okay. So a bunch of you would be in New York for a twip. So when things get settled down, we'll have a, um, um, a live twiv, yep. Yeah, we give you balanced science. That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Although I'm sure there are people who think they don't get balanced science here. Oh, well. Thank you, Hoplite, for your super chat. I appreciate it. We do our best. We do our best. I, but I have to say, look, I've been studying viruses since 19... 75 in laboratories i've been teaching i wrote a textbook i do podcasts i i th eat breathe and think viruses i know a little bit i don't know everything but i know a little bit so you might as well ask me questions and if i don't know the answer i'll tell you when did i first meet amy uh she came she did her phd in my lab in the uh, in the 90s early 90s and then she went away for a number of years and then six years ago came back and here she is. Thank you, John Snyder, for your contribution. Big Top Tent Studio for a live twiv. Yeah. Flaming viruses, flying viruses, cornea candy, and corona cake pops. Yeah, I don't know where we'd do a live twiv. It would be cool to do it outside and uh, get some local virologists, right? We'll work on it. I'll get Daniel to help me out. Has it been established that fully vaccinated people do get infected and capable of transmitting even at a no low rate? No, it hasn't. It's too soon after vaccination to be to be 
in my opinion, looking at that. But those studies are ongoing, as far as I understand. Yes, the vaccine's in your body for four days, and then the RNA is pretty much gone. I read that Aztecs suffered pandemics before contact with Europeans. Why do none come out of the Americas? I'm thinking. That's a good question. I'm trying to think if any influenza pandemics have come out of the Americas. It's, it's, a, it's a little... Uh, maybe 2009 might be the only one. Uh, but I don't know. It's a good question. You, you know, there are parts of the Americas that um, are quite rural and have a lot of human-animal contact. I don't know. Is there any evidence of long COVID in people who are infected with SARS after being fully vaccinated? Not yet. I don't think we're far enough out to know that. Am I, am I continuing to wear masks because the vaccines aren't as effective as claimed? No, I am wearing a mask because the vaccines aren't 100% effective at preventing COVID. And I don't want to get any sort of COVID at my age. I will, I will stop wearing a mask when 70% of the population is immunized, say. How do viral genomes integrate into the host? Is it more common in certain kinds of viruses? Role in evolution. All, right, all good questions. So mainly the retroviruses integrate. It's a family of RNA viruses that have an enzyme that converts the RNA to DNA, then it integrates, and that's an obligate part of the reproduction cycle of the virus. It has to happen for the virus to reproduce. So retroviruses do that. Just one group of viruses. And other viruses don't do that. It's not an obligate part of the reproduction cycle. Now, is with role in evolution, you know, 11% of our genome is retroviral. They're remnants of old retrovirus infections. And we have actually repurposed some of those viral genes. And so have many other species. So huge role in evolution. And not just protein coding regions, but promoters and regulatory regions and so forth. So uh, when DNA comes into us, uh, we use it. Now, this is on an evolutionary scale. We're talking about many, many millions of years, right? Um, it doesn't happen overnight. Yesterday, Facebook banned you for 24 hours for bullying anti-vax people who were spreading nonsense. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I guess you just have to talk calmly, right? Although they don't. Uh, it seems crazy. <laughs> How do you feel about the CDC decision to only call out breakthrough cases if one is hospitalized or died? I don't, I don't see the purpose of calling out any breakthrough because it's what happens with a vaccine that's not 100% and it's not preventing infection. You're always going to have some infection. And we're just putting too much focus on that. And People say, oh, look, the vaccine doesn't work. Why should I get vaccinated? So I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, yeah, there's a study showing uh, some lowered shedding, but we don't know what that means exactly, exactly. Balance science, easy now. This can be a gateway for creationism or crank denialism. Yeah, it's fine. We're not going to use balance science. I just thought it was a good idea rather than selective science. Uh, did the jury ever come back on how Sweden did? I haven't followed Sweden since the old days last year. Um, they did have a high mortality rate. I don't know. I, I think that's the bottom line. They had a higher mortality rate, and that's it. It's the way they handled it. <clears throat> yes, people in the U.S. are going on holidays. Yep, that's what I think. I hear a lot of people talking about, oh, now I'm vaccinated. Now I can go on a vacation. <clears throat> Do you think the placebo effect can prevent side effects? I convinced myself I would not get side effects. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about that. Um, placebo effect can account for 30% of, of the effect of anything, any drug or vaccine. If you have 30% result with something, it can be just placebo. Yeah. So I'm not sure that you willing it is going to help 
that's beyond my expertise for sure. Is Iceland safe for vacation? No idea. I have no idea. Thank you, Pritch, for your contribution. Um, and you heard when I first met Amy in the 90s, she, she did her PhD with me. And you listen to uh, Apple Podcasts via Alexa, no ads. Good. If you hear ads, they're not mine. They're not mine. Um, and so I would prefer that people didn't run ads. Um, so here's the story, Jamie. You don't get pandemics, but you certainly get spillovers. There are a lot of examples of new virus infections that have originated in uh, South America for sure. You know, they didn't, I and mean, we're talking about, so yellow fever, right? A long time ago, beyond when we were around, so we don't think about it. But, And there are many other viruses that have emerged. They just haven't spread globally, that's all. So it happens. Um, and why some from certain areas spread, who knows? Who knows? Is the dose response curve for vaccines typically such that there's a sweet spot? Is it ever the case that more is worse, less effective, more dangerous? I'm not quite sure. I mean, what we do is we test vaccines in different doses. We see what levels of immunity they give. We want the highest level of immunity that you can achieve with the smallest dose, and we see if it's protective. I think if you give more antigen, you don't always necessarily get a higher antibody T cell level, better memory, and so forth. So only situations where, you know, not more is, is worse. There, there are situations where antibodies can be dangerous or damaging, like an antibody-dependent enhancement, but that's you know, mainly dengue and certain coronavirus infections. So I, I think not. If they release the new booster vaccine and Universal is okay to get another shot within six months. Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't get another mRNA shot within six months or once a year like you do with flu vaccines, right? No one will do a clinical trial on a drug they won't get any money from. Yes, I think that's a problem. The uh, You need a 4,000 person RCT and nobody's going to pay for that. So I think um, that's not happening. But as you know, many countries are just using it, and they'll continue to do that. Now, I'm not going to argue with you, Carol, but you shouldn't say it does work. It depends on the, on the trial. Some trials it does and some it doesn't. Look at the link I gave you uh, earlier. If it worked, if it were a game changer, if it were slam dunk, uh, we'd be using it, but it's not a slam dunk. If, if it worked, Merck would be yelling. Maybe. Well, you know, Merck gave it away for river blindness a number of years ago. My wife worked on ivermectin for 20 years at Merck. And um, they gave it away, and it was good PR for them. And so you can bet that if this worked, they would give it away. Thank you for your super chat. I appreciate it. No, it's it's uh, trying to spread knowledge about viruses. That's all it is. <laughs> okay, I'm not even going to read that because you can see it. But Carol, do not use your experience to justify a drug. You, as you know, you need a randomized clinical trial. That's not fair. If we all said, yeah, I took it and it worked and used that as the basis for using a drug, well, we'd be in, in trouble, wouldn't we? Oh, do you think we, we will change the title of this live stream? What is it now? It's uh, Q&A Q with A and V, right? You want me to change that or take out the COVID part? I think at some point we'll, we'll take out COVID, answering your questions about COVID, right? Uh, yeah, we'll be answering your questions about viruses, right? But I could also see doing a series of live streams with different people from my different pods. I do one with Nels already. We do a live stream for Tuivo now. And we could do one 
Michael Schmidt would definitely do a, a twim. You could answer your questions about bacteria, right? That would be fun. And I could just facilitate those. Thank you, John, for your super chat. Appreciate it. Appreciate it very much. Yeah, we'll get someone on to talk about universal flu vaccine. You bet. All right, no more ivermectin. Antoinette, thank you for your super chat. Appreciate it. Appreciate your support. Other than collage in your channel, is there anything else I can learn about virology? I don't know what you mean by that. I have two good friends who are vaccine hesitant. They are also both Walking Dead fans. Oh, Grateful Dead, right? Could, show, could the show influence their perception on how viruses vaccine? Walking Dead is something else. Sorry. Uh, no, I have never watched it. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, come and group photo at the wall of polio. Wouldn't the wall be prettier with the front of the plate? They, the, over time, the plates fade and you can't really see anything. So I don't think so. And the other thing is that the... Um, I'm going to move it to the studio probably at some point. I'm not going to be at Columbia forever, but I think at some point I will move the wall of polio to the studio, but not right away. Do I agree with the letters asking for a full investigation? I think we should know where it came from for sure. I'd like to know what bat in nature it came from. Yeah. I don't agree that they think it's possible it came from a lab, but... You know, that's just me and a few other people. Um, when is the new studio opening up? I think we're going to sign a lease next week. And then they have to do a little renovation. Because it was, it was like a, a bank or something beforehand or a place where people bought tickets and they have a lot of carols. So they have to take the carols out. And then I have to, you know, equip a little studio there. So I'm thinking... I'm thinking July 1st I could start working there. But this um, this live stream I'll, I'll be doing here because it's too late to stay in New York. So all these ivermectin comments were, were trolls. I'm sorry. You know, I, I have to really <laughs> I have to be careful. Sorry. I like to teach people. What can I do? Uh, why do you think multipartite viruses exist mostly in plants and in great number? Oh, because in plants, it's like one giant cell, right? So in, in us, our cells are isolated. So a virus gets into a cell and everything needs to be there for the virus to reproduce. But in a plant, you know, one genome could get into one cell and another could get into another. And then the gene products all mix. They diffuse throughout the plant, so you can have multipartite viruses in plants. Yeah. Yep. I'm reading about the origins, I read that she was working with newly found bat coronaviruses. Okay, so this is one thing that's wrong. She wasn't working with newly found bat coronaviruses. She was working with sequences from them. And she had constructed quite a, a few of them, which had been worked with years and they weren't anywhere related to SARS-CoV-2. So I don't see why this is an issue. And by the way, folks, you know, many news outlets are using my interview with Peter Daszak as evidence that it was created in Wuhan. This is ridiculous. Picking and choosing what you want to believe. When the immune system responds to displayed virus proteins on a cell's membrane, does this kill the cell? Well, it depends what kind of a cell. So if it's an infected cell and it's a, it's a cytotoxic T cell that's detecting the viral protein on the surface, then that's what the CTL is going to do. It's going to kill that cell. But other kinds of cells 
display viral proteins like dendritic cells and macrophages. And they, they present the proteins to T cells in the lymph node. And then if the protein is foreign, which in the case of a viral protein it is, then the T cell is going to start an immune response. And the dendritic cell and the macrophages, they don't die. They go out back out and do more of the same. How did they isolate SARS-CoV-2? So one of the first patients in uh, Wuhan with pneumonia, they put a tube down the lung into the trachea. They spritzed a little PBS, saline, and they pulled it back up. So they basically washed a little bit of the lung. And then they put that in cells in culture, and the cells died, and they looked at it under the electron microscope, and they saw coronaviruses. Yeah, every week is something else, isn't it true? I'm not um, sponsored by Big Pharma. Neither is the moderator, no. Yeah, my, we give ivermectin heart, heart guard to our dogs, yeah. But you could ask all kinds of questions not about ivermectin. How do they isolate SARS-CoV-2? I just told you, yeah. I'm scrolling down here. What do you think of uh, saying the vaccines reduce transmission? No, we don't have any evidence for that. I bet it does. Most vaccines do that, right? That's why you get herd immunity. If they didn't inhibit transmission, you wouldn't get any herd immunity. Uh, no, I did not. Well, uh, neutralizing antibodies are what cause ADE, but uh, I've never seen any ADE in people, but I'll, I'll keep an eye on that. We could talk about it next week. My son has a tournament in one week. Does he have enough time? No, but you could get vaccinated anyway, but it's not enough time for protection. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm not going to be pulled in by trolls now. There are a lot of comments here that I feel like answering, and I am not. Thank you, Sean, for your contributions. Really appreciate it. Now, RITG is, is from a bat, but it's too different. Even if you tweaked it, it would never become SARS-CoV-2. Just not happening. And the lineage shows it's a, a virus from nature. It's quite clear. I mean, it takes a lot of time to sit down and explain these things, and most people don't want to, to go through it. Thank you, Tom, for your contribution. Is it correct to say that once a cell is infected by a virus, it will be destroyed either by the virus itself or the immune system? There is no way it will survive. No, it's not true. So, yes, those are the three outcomes. The cell could be killed by the virus, it could be killed by the immune response, or it could survive. Yeah, for sure. Viruses can uh, persistently infect cells, and cells can survive for a long time. But not SARS-CoV-2. No, not SARS-CoV-2. Given the unintentional UK experiment with spacing out the second shot, number of weeks between Moderna, whatever you need. You know, three, four weeks was just artificially designed to speed up the trial. You can go months and you're fine if you have to. I would say a month or two or three would be absolutely fine. Of course, you just increase the chance you're going to be infected. You can be less protected, but you still have pretty good protection after one, not full. Those who had COVID, are they less likely to have symptoms uh, uh, after you get a vaccine? No. In fact, if you've had COVID, then the first vaccine is sort of like the second, where people get more enhanced symptoms, right? When the mRNA is delivered to the cell via the mRNA vaccines, does each cell produce a single spike? No, no. Each cell will produce many spikes, right? Because the mRNA, each lipid nanoparticle has quite a few mRNAs in it. So those are all going to get in the cell. They're going to be translated each many, many times. And um, they will, a fraction of them will be chopped up. The proteasome doesn't chop up all proteins, right? 
it wouldn't do that because it doesn't distinguish between what's in your cell that's needed or not. So it just chops up a fraction. Um, and I think it's a stochastic event. Why are they recommending vaccination after infection? Because the immunity after infection is more uneven than the immunity after vaccination. That's why. Instead, so they can't check everyone, right? So the blanket recommendation is just to get um, vaccinated. That's why. And maybe at some point they won't do that anymore. One player was symptomatic. Yeah. But so some people will be mildly symptomatic. You're not going to get sick. You're not, you're not going to get hospital, hospitalized. You're not going to die for sure. Thank you, John, for your contribution. Appreciate it. You think linoleic acid can prevent the virus from getting into cells, binding affinity to spike? Uh, it might, but I don't think it would be effective as an antiviral. Usually these compounds that prevent attachment are not very effective because it's hard to inhibit uh, the interface between a big protein and a big receptor. Yeah, there you go. An old uh, pandemic that originated perhaps in the Americas. Yep. Kansas. <laughs> That's right. So, you know, never say never. Exactly. All right, let's see if we got some super chats here that I have to thank in the last few minutes. Sweden has the highest case rates in Europe. Okay. Is, and, and this one person has asked me 50 times, how did they isolate SARS-CoV-2? <laughs> I think one answer is enough. All right, let's see. Are there any super chats down here? Here we go. Here's one. Ian, thank you so much. New Zealand. Kia ora. I learned that from Andrew. 756 had me looking up a lot of stuff. Yep. That's good, though. Um, it's good that you look up things in response to hearing things that you don't know. And uh, thank you. My pleasure. These are just reading glasses, um, but I like to mix it up, you know. So, Raphael, they prefer not to use convalescent plasma at this moment from a vaccinated person, but that is, in fact, how they make plasma for th other therapeutic uses. So, you know, pooled IG IgG, which they use to treat people. Um, they are made by immunizing people, volunteers, and taking their serum. Rabies antibodies, which are given to people who get bit by rabid animals, are made by immunizing people with rabies vaccine and then uh, purifying the IgG. So um, it might change at some point. So the answer is yes, you could use it. They're not using it at the moment. When the T cells kick in, how do they inactivate, slice, kill the virus? So the T cells kill the cells. They don't kill the virus. The T cells recognize that a cell is infected because um, the cell is on its surface. It has viral peptides being presented. That's part of the, the thing that cells do. They sample a bit of the all the proteins inside of them and they put them on the surface and then t cells will look at them and ask if they're foreign or not and if they're foreign they'll kill the cell if they're not foreign they'll leave it alone so the it's the infected cell that is killed not the virus by the t cells and no no problem with kansas it's just you know, it's, it's, every every place has a little issue at some point in another in history. Do live attenuated vir vaccines have microorganisms that can't reproduce but still cause disease? No, live attenuated vaccines have, say, viruses that 
reproduce, but they don't cause disease. So the Sabin poliovirus vaccine is uh, an attenuated vaccine that's infectious. You drink it, it reproduces in your gut, but it doesn't, most of the time, doesn't cause polio. Unfortunately, one in a million and a half recipients, it does cause polio. And so that is a problem. And yes, the recovered cases do add to the overall immunity. And remember, we are underestimating the number of infections by at least tenfold. So if we have 40% fully vaccinated in the U.S., we have another good percentage. I forgot. I've done, I did the calculation once, but I forgot. We're getting over 50% with the, with the natural infections because they're at least tenfold underestimated. Yeah, for sure. Will the commute be terrible? No, actually, my commute now sucks. I have to drive 38 miles to Columbia each way, and I'm tired of that. I've been doing that since 1989. So I'm going to just go to the train station, which is not too far away, and take New Jersey Transit 30-minute and walk two blocks to the incubator. That's got to be better, right? And I can read virology articles on the plane, <laughs> on the train. Well, with that... It is time to say good night. Uh, it has been a pleasure having all 443 of you. Before you go, give a give a thumbs up beneath the uh, video window. You could just give it a thumbs up, and that kind of emphasizes to the YouTube community that this is a good thing here, and maybe some other people will come. Um, and uh, do come back next week. If we didn't get to your question, bring it with you. If you come on, the chat opens up a half hour earlier. Um you could put your questions in, and I'm usually there answering uh, in the chat. That's starting at about 7.30. So, uh, Frank and uh, Vanity Nutrition, thank you for modding. Thank you all for coming with your great questions and comments, and we will see you next time. Good night. <laughs>